In the last couple of months, I've noticed that this add-on slash procedural materials library, so I decided to talk about it. It is called Sanctus Library, and it is one of the most impressive procedural libraries for Blender that is growing each month with additional features and assets. The add-on got recently updated and got some interesting new improvements, such as materials and tools that we're gonna talk about in this video. The biggest new thing that came with the latest update is the shader tools. So before we tackle the procedural materials, I want to take a look at these tools and see how they can offer more possibilities when it comes to creating your own procedural materials. The set of Sank 2 shader tools is divided and organized into six categories listed in the add-ons and panel of the shader editor. First, you got some interesting UV maps, including bricks, hacks, radial, tiles, and voxel coordinates. The tiles UVs come with two types, checkers and random. These coordinate maps make it easier to create any sort of material surfaces you need, whether it be architectural or organic, as each node group outputs all the necessary maps and masks you will need for working with a specific texture, such as random colors, bevel mask, etc. There are also four different fully mathematical decorative patterns, two of which are randomly generated. You can change their scale, thickness, number of iterations, and so on. They are very useful to have in some cases when you are working on interiors or just some abstract decoration. Next, in the shader tools, you have a smart edge detection mask for adding procedural details such as dust and damage. They also made available a smart module for adding edgeware that uses smart mask and takes as an input the object shader and mixes it with the edgeware shader giving a very nice looking damaged object, or a very bad looking one I should say. In the utils category, you have two node groups, an RGB to CMYK converter and a combined CMYK. I know there are a lot of people struggling to convert the color format to CMYK with a ton of math nodes, but now it is just a matter of one node. Jump into the most interesting part of the shader tools, which is the textures category. It regroups nine complex textures including clouds, cells, cracks, dents, marks, scratches, animated caustics, and voxel noise textures. They are all based on native Blender noise, Voronoi, and white noise textures. They may run a little slow on your computer if used multiple times in one scene, so be careful not to overuse them. My personal favorites are the caustics and voxel noise textures that can produce cool results if used properly. Now let's take a look at the amazing procedural materials this add-on has to offer. They have added 9 architectural glass textures in the glasses category, also with fake refraction and caustic effect, unique for each glass that gets projected on the neighboring surfaces. One of the new glass textures takes images as an input and displays them in a beautiful mosaic style. In the buildings category, they have added 4 variations of detailed hexagonal tiles materials with displacements, and keep in mind that everything is procedural and generated mathematically which means that it doesn't rely on heavy image textures that take all over the drive storage. And it also offers a ginormous amount of customization, giving you the ability to create multiple unique variations of each material that you can use later on on any other project. And all this is at the tip of your fingers without moving a single node. For example, in this new hex tiles material, you can change their scale, and of course the corners roundness, the amount of damage, the amount of tilt, and even the amount of damage on the borders only, and the list goes on. Sanctus went so far to make the two set of parameters for some materials like aging tiles materials, where there are advanced and simple parameters for more friendly experience. Furthermore, a new type of car paint has been added, also with four variations that work well with both Cycles and Eevee. In addition to two glass materials, exclusively for EV, thin, and solid glass. What's also great about this version is the new icons in the corner of the material thumbnails that give additional information about the materials, where the green, yellow, and red colors are for time processing. The letter E for EV, C for cycles, but there is no letter available when the material works both in cycles and EV. And the dents indicate that it needs displacement. You need to know that, for those who don't know, to make the displacement work properly, you will have to enable the experimental features in the render properties and add a subdivision service modifier to the object you want to apply the materials to, and check the adaptive subdivision. It will give your object enough geometry for the displacement to work in all areas near the camera and low level of subdivision for far objects. 
If you don't want to install the add-on, you can use the available asset browser that includes all the materials and now with their categories and thumbnails, which allows you to apply the materials easily as dragging and dropping them in the viewport. At the time of making this video, the Sanctus library contains 180 procedural and fully customizable materials, including animated materials such as raindrop effects or ventilation panels, and also stylized materials, tune shaders, stones, fabrics, smart metals, and so much more. Also, keep in mind that it is an ever-grown library, which means you will get access to more and more exciting assets and features each month, free of charge, of course. Also, when it comes to updates, the developers shared some of the upcoming materials that are going to be added to the library in the next update. They include old wood planks, old brick wall, hair and fur. If you are interested in this add-on, you will find the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.